Today I'm gonna to show you the two best options to transferring everything from your old smartphone to your new Samsung Galaxy device. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Now the biggest challenge when going to a new phone is transferring or copying all of your information from your old phone to your new device. Well, Samsung has actually made that really easy if you are going to a new Samsung Galaxy device using their Smart Switch application. Now I've used this app a ton and it does a great job of copying everything from the old phone over to the new phone. Now there are two methods in which you can use to transfer all of your information. One is a wireless solution, and then one is a wired solution. Now I did mention before that this will work if you have a Samsung device already, but if you don't, if you have maybe another Android device, like here I have a Google Pixel, this would work. And even if you have an iPhone, this supports that as well. So stay tuned to learn how to get everything transferred over. Now, one of the first questions I'm always asked about transferring your information over is when should you move the SIM card? So the SIM card is what is actually inside the phone. So here, if I use the SIM card ejection tool that came inside the box and I eject this here, and here at the top, we have the micro SD card slot. And then here we have the SIM card. And the SIM card is what actually stores your phone number. Now I recommend doing it before you set up the phone. So maybe when you're at the store buying your phone, they're gonna put a new SIM card, make sure everything works great. And then I would complete the transfer. Now it doesn't matter when you do this, you can do it at any time, but that's just a convenient way to know that your phone is working properly. And then you transfer all the information over. But today I'm actually going to transfer my SIM cards later and I'm gonna just transfer everything over right now, just because depending on your carrier, it might be a different process. So that's the first thing to know when transferring to a new phone. Now the second is your micro SD card. So is what I would do is you can pull this out and put it in the new phone before you even turn it on. Or there's actually an option in Smart Switch where you can just copy all the information onto here, onto the new phone, and then you can repurpose the micro SD card if you would like. All those options will be available. So let's start with the wireless version. Now you might have just unboxed your phone. I just skip through all of the settings and I'm gonna go here to the main page and that's where we're going to get started. The next step is to get the Smart Switch application. Now you don't need to have your SIM card in here like I mentioned before. All you need to do is go and find the Galaxy Store. So I'm just gonna search Galaxy Store. There's the Galaxy Store and make sure that you have the latest version of the Smart Switch application. So here I have the Smart Switch Mobile and that's the latest version. So I'm going to open that up and now it's going to ask for some permissions so that it can search all that info and move it over. So we're going to allow. And then on the new phone, I do need to make sure that I'm connected to the internet to download that application. So here we're going to choose Wi-Fi. Other than downloading the app, you actually don't need Wi-Fi at all. So here Smart Switch is already installed, but I am going to update it to make sure I have the latest version. Now, even though this is the wireless option, you don't need to have Wi-Fi if you have the applications. Now, once you have the applications on both phones, so if you have, let's say a Pixel over here, download Smart Switch or any other phone. So once the app is updated, we're gonna head back into the Smart Switch application, agree, allow, and now you have the option to transfer everything over. So over here on the old phone, we're gonna select send data. So we're gonna send it to the new phone. And here you can choose if you're using the cable or wireless. So here we're gonna use the wireless option. And then over here, it automatically detected this is trying to send the info. And here it's saying, do you want to allow this connection? So yes, I'm going to allow. And now it is going to search through the old phone and find out all of the info that it can actually copy over to the new phone. And it's not going to delete anything on the old phone. It is just simply copying everything to the new device. So here it's asking what it should bring over. So it has calls and contacts, messages, apps, settings, your home screen layout. And that's typically if you have a Samsung phone. Here it talks about the secure folder, which is set up over here. Once I added the secure folder password, then it allowed for a secure folder. Here it has all the images, all the videos, all the audio, and all the documents. 
that are stored directly on the phone. With all those selected here, it says it's 36 gigabytes of data, and that will take about 20 minutes. Now, if I want to transfer everything that was on the micro SD card, I do have the option down here where I could transfer the images, the videos, the audio, as well as the documents, but I'm actually just going to pull out the SD card and put it in the new device so that everything is still on there and it's not taking up more space on the phone. Now, with each of these, you have the option to not transfer certain information. So let's say I go into messages and I don't wanna transfer every single text message. I could come in here and select only the last two years or only the last six months or the last 30 days. So it all depends on what text messages you want to send over. Here under apps, we can scroll through and uncheck maybe apps that we actually don't want to have transferred over. So you have that option there. Here with the settings, um, it's just pretty much everything. So if you don't want the settings, you could uncheck that. With the images, you could go through and uncheck certain albums that you don't want transferred over. And then here with videos, it's pretty much everything. Documents, again, that's everything. So that looks good. I wanna transfer everything over from my S10 to the new Galaxy S20. Uh, if you didn't know, Samsung didn't go with the S11. They skipped to the year, so the S20, because it came out in 2020. Oh, and then here it is giving me the option to actually copy my Google account over as well. So it says copy your Google accounts, other accounts, and restore your Google backup if available. So I actually do wanna do that so that it copies over to my new phone as well, and then I don't have to go into the menu and sign in. So we're gonna select copy. And then here I need to enter in my password to complete that transfer. And there, once I put in my Google password, it then went to the next step. You don't need to do the Google account. You could skip that. I recommend doing it. And now here it is transferring all of the data. You can see what it's transferring right there, how long it's going to take, and you could actually lock the phone so the phones don't need to stay on, but just to stay on top of it, you could have keep screen on right there to keep track of the progress. So we're gonna let that do its thing. And now we're gonna show you the wired solution. When you are using the wired solution, there are a few things you need to know. So here is the OTG USB cable. Now you only need this if you are coming from an iPhone or if you are coming from a phone that has a micro USB port. If your old phone has a USB-C port, you can actually use the USB-C cable that comes in the box of your Galaxy S20 to complete the transfer. Now with the wireless solution, you can download what you have stored in iCloud, but it's just better to use this wired solution if you have an iPhone. To make all of this a little bit easier to understand, let me show you how this would work with each different device. First here, we have the iPhone 11, and here I have the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. For this, I will need to use the Samsung USB connector. So I'm gonna take this and plug it into my Samsung device, and then you will need to get the iPhone charging cable. Here we have the lightning cable and I'm going to plug this into the connector, and then I'm going to plug in the iPhone. Now here it is asking what app I wanna use. I wanna use Smart Switch. And then over here on the iPhone, it will ask if I trust the computer or the phone that it is connected to. So we're gonna select Trust. We will need to type in our pin code. And over here on the Samsung device, I just need to select Next, and now it's gonna go through the process of searching through the phone. Now you do need to have your battery charged above 60% so it can do that, but it's going to be the same process after that once it searches through the phone. Now one thing I do wanna mention with an iPhone, you can't automatically download applications because an iPhone uses a different app store than the Google Play Store. You will need to go and download all the apps, but it will pull over a list of apps you had downloaded so that you can actually go directly into the Play Store and download that or a very similar application. Now let me show you how to do this with another Android phone that's not Samsung going to the new Samsung device. Now first, you still need to download the Smart Switch application. So we're gonna head into the Play Store, search for Smart Switch, and we are going to install that application. Now because the Pixel 4 XL here has USB-C, we only need to use the USB-C to USB-C cable with this. So here I'm going to plug in into the Galaxy S20 Plus, and then here I'm going to plug in on the Pixel 4 XL, open with Smart Switch, receive data, 
And on the Pixel, you do need to make sure that you scroll down and go to Android system, tap on there, and then we need to change this to file transfer. Once we have done that, it's gonna open Smart Switch again, receive data, and here it's prompting us to go into the Smart Switch application. So we're gonna open Smart Switch, agree, allow. We need to go through and allow for all the different permissions. And now it is scanning the pixel so that it can find what it can transfer over to the new Samsung device. So here we'll have all these options, calls, messages, apps, pen up, images, videos, music, and documents. And then here I would select transfer to move that all over. Now let's go ahead and do this from the Galaxy Note 10 Plus to my Galaxy S20 Ultra. So is how you're gonna do this is you do wanna make sure on the new Samsung phone, you have the latest software version of Smart Switch. So we're gonna do that again by connecting to the Wi-Fi. Now, if the phone's brand new and you go into the notification panel here, you'll see Smart Switch is available right there and you can open it up. If you don't see that, just head into the Galaxy Store and then we're going to search for Smart Switch. Here we have Smart Switch and we are going to update. And if you read through here, it does talk about as long as you have a Android 4.0 or above, you can use the wireless transfer. And then here for iOS devices, wired transfer, you do need to have iOS 5.0 or above to be able to use the cable transfer solution. So all we need to do is plug one side into the Ultra and then plug one side into our old device. And now let's head back into Smart Switch. And now we're going to choose Receive Data. So I'm gonna choose this in a minute, but if you do have an iPhone, you also have the option other than the cable to do the wireless from iCloud right there. And then here you do have Windows Phone Blackberry, you have a cable and wireless solution. But here we're gonna choose Android or Galaxy, and I'm going to select the cable option. And since this is Samsung to Samsung, here it's asking me if I want to use Smart Switch, and I'm going to allow, and then here I'm going to select send data, and now they are connected, I'm going to allow on this phone, and now we're gonna go through the same process of it scanning the old phone to find out what data I can transfer over. And this will just take a minute. On the iPhone, it might take quite a bit of time just because it's like temporarily storing those files so it will be able to transfer them over. I actually have a full video about that process um, that I'll leave at the end if you're interested in checking that out. So here it is now showing all the different info that can be transferred over the same that we saw with the wireless solution. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and say, yes, I want everything from the old device transferred over. Actually, it does say it's 90 gigabytes, which is gonna take an hour and 13 minutes. I actually don't want it to take that long. So down here under the videos, I have 60 gig of videos, which I already have those backed up um, through Dropbox or Google Photos. So I'm going to uncheck the videos and uh, I'm gonna uncheck the images because I already have those in other places. So now that we have that, I'm going to select transfer. And there you can see it dropped it down to 25 gigabytes at 14 minutes. So let's select transfer. And again here, it's asking for me to copy over my Google account. Here I just need to verify my identity, input my password, and now it is transferring everything over. And so here you can see on our wireless version, we have eight minutes left. It's transferred 58% of the information. Over here, the wired transfer, we have 12 minutes left, 13%. Now this isn't a comparison of speed really, because we have different sizes of transfers going from one device to the other. This is just to show you the two different methods. And we'll just let that sit and I'll show you what it looks like when it is complete. For the wireless transfer, you do need to make sure that the phones are pretty close together. They don't have to be right next to each other like this, but they do need to be fairly close together so that they can complete that transfer and it's as fast as possible. 
Here with the cabled solution, you do need to make sure that they continue to stay plugged in. Now here you can see that I'm at 30% battery, which is a little low. If you're too low, it's not going to transfer. So make sure you charge up your device before you go ahead and complete the smart switch transfer. Now, if you are looking for any other methods to transfer, maybe this doesn't work, or maybe you're actually not going to a Samsung phone, I'll have a full playlist of the different solutions at the end of this video. All right, and over here, the wireless option is done. So now we can close the other phone. And now this phone, we really don't need it anymore. So after we check to make sure everything is there, you can then factory reset this and trade it in if you have already done that sell it or whatever you want to do with this device. Um, but again, all of our information stays over here and it's just copied to the new phone. It did not delete anything on the old phone. So now let's go to the home screen. Now, after the transfer is complete, it might take a little bit to put everything in the right place. So if it's not there, um, you may just need to wait a little bit more time. So like right now, the home screen isn't fully over here. So over here, if we go into the notifications, here you can see that it's still organizing the stuff. So even though the transfer is complete, that means they don't need to be connected anymore, but here it is actually finishing the organization of where everything goes. So immediately everything's not going to be in the right place. It will take a little bit more time and then we're gonna check out what that looks like. And now the wired version is complete as well. So we're gonna select go to the home screen and now we can actually unplug this. While these are plugged in, it's actually charging the old device, so you may want to unplug it um, as soon as it's done. And again, it is still going through the process to finish putting everything and organizing it into the right place. But now over here on the wired version, it has completed moving and putting everything in the right place. It's still installing the applications. So we're not gonna talk about that right now. We'll just let them do their thing. And here it says it's done copying, tap to see results. So if we come in here, it will tell us that it copied everything over successfully. So let's select done. And now you can see that when we go to the home screen, it is the exact same as over here on the Galaxy S10. Now it's the same on the S20. You'll notice down here at the bottom, it did miss this one icon with the K. That's because this is the secure folder and I'll go ahead and get that set up later. But now let's check out some of the other info. So if we come up here, um, all the apps are downloading again, so not everything is exactly the same, but I think the biggest thing is the home screen set up the same way. Here we have all of these different applications. It looks like some of the website links didn't save over, but here the games folder moved over, all my other icons there, and here her home page, everything moved over. It looks like the only thing we need to add is the quick contact, so quickly calling somebody We'll need to add those back, but all the other app folders have moved over as well as notes and the weather, which is really nice. So if we come in here, we can see that in the phone, if we go to recents, here we have the recent history for the phone. If we go to contacts, we have all the contacts in here. And because we signed in with Google, if they were backed up with Google, they will show up in here as well. And then we're gonna go into the camera and here we can see that we even have some photos. Some came from the future, which is really cool. But here um, she has all her photos. And then in the album, she has all the different albums that she had before. Now, some of the info might not be on there again, because I need to move the SD card over, um, which I will do in a little bit. Next, let's check text messages. So if we go into the messaging application, here we have all of her text messages. So those all moved over as well. And that's most of the things that you would want to have moved over. The last thing is some of the settings. Those have moved over. So anything that you had set up in the settings here, it will be copied over here as well. And so there, everything moved over. I'm very happy with the result. It looks really great. Now let's check out over here. Now let's check out the cable solution. Again, because I had a Samsung phone, it transferred the home screen. If you don't have a Samsung phone, it won't transfer the home screen. You'll just need to set it up. And it's moved over my home screen here so I can go through and you can see that most of it's there. Some of the reasons it wouldn't have transferred this Google Calendar widget is because the Google Calendar app hasn't been fully set up. So I might need to go and manually add that. And then here it just doesn't have the latest update of some of the apps. And if we go down here, now over here on my Note 10 Plus, I did switch to the new Android gestures feature. So if I swipe up, 
you'll go to the recent apps menu. That was also copied over here. You can see that I don't have the home row key. I'll cover that in another video. But again, pretty much everything transferred over. Go into our contacts here. There we have all the contacts. If I wanna check the pictures, again, I didn't actually transfer any pictures or videos. So there's nothing showing up in the phone. And then if I go to my phone app and I go to recents, here we have all the different recent calls that I made that are showing up there. So both ways work really great. If you're choosing to do the wireless solution or you're choosing to do the wired solution, the most important thing is this will only work if you're transferring to a new Samsung device. Now, the last thing you will want to do after completing the transfer is to sign into all of your applications. Now, if you have never set up a password management app, this is where I recommend to do that. I've used Google password management as well as Samsung Pass password management, and it makes it so easy when transferring to a new phone because this only copied the information to the new device, but you will now need to sign into all of your apps. So like, let's say on this phone, I wanna sign into my fitness application. So I come in here and I'm like, oh, what's my username and password? I can't remember that. But here it's giving me the option to sign in with Samsung Pass. So I select Samsung Pass, I then sign into my Samsung account. If you don't have one, you can select continue with Google and it will just use your Google account to create a Samsung account. Now I have two factor authentication set up on my Samsung account. So I do need to receive a text message to be able to log in. So if you are saving all of your passwords in a application, make sure that you have something like two factor authentication to have it be the most secure. So nobody can just get one password and have access to all of your passwords. So make sure you have done that first. And now when we log in with our Samsung account, it will save all of that information every time we log in. And you can set up a fingerprint or a pin or a pattern to easily log in. So if I come in here into the Fitbit application where I have already saved that information to Samsung Pass, when I tap the email, here it's saying, do I wanna autofill with Samsung Pass? I then tap that, verify, and it then puts in my info and I can log right in. Now, if you've never used Samsung Pass before, as you go through and set up your new phone and log into all your accounts, it will then save that login information to Samsung Pass. So from now on, it will always remember that and you can easily update it and you don't have to worry about remembering all those passwords when you go to the new phone. So I highly recommend getting that set up today. And then once that's done, you'll have your phone completely set up uh, just like you like it. And so those are the two ways that I recommend in copying everything from your old phone to your new phone. Again, the wireless solution or the wired solution. Now I do highly recommend making sure that your phones are charged before you do this. You can put over your SIM card before you transfer and your micro SD card. And then once that's ready, just make sure that you have the latest update to the Samsung Smart Switch application. The easiest way to do that is to connect to Wi-Fi and then go into the Galaxy App Store to download the Smart Switch update, and then you are ready to transfer. If you have any further questions about this process, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see other ways in which you can transfer your content from your old phone to your new phone, make sure you check out the video over here on the side. I'll also leave a link to how to set up Samsung Pass in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.